My name is Lucy and on behalf of Dr. T, I would like to begin with BI Norwegian Business School. Um, I would like to introduce Amanda. She is a student and she's going to talk to us about the bachelor programs. Welcome, Amanda. The floor is yours. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, hi. Um, I'm going to first, oh, let me go. I'm going to first introduce myself a little bit. My name is Amanda and I'm from Taiwan. Um, I did my Bachelor of Business Administration at BI and now I'm a first year master's student in business analytics. So today I will introduce um, the uh, program at BI and then talk a little bit about BI in Norway and some practical, practical information for you guys. So um, the agenda that we have today is we're going to start with why BI and why Norway. Then I'll talk about the Bachelor of Business Administration and Bachelor of Business Analytics program. Um, then I'll share some of my experience of how my bachelor is like at BI. Then uh, afterwards, there will be some practical information for you guys. And in the end, we will have some Q and A's. So feel free to ask anything in the chat and we will answer, try to answer all of the questions that we have later on. So we are going to first start with uh, why Norway. Uh, Norway is a very beautiful country. It's a European green capital. It has very convenient public transportation. Um, you also have, uh, it's also very easy to, travel to, uh, easy to travel within Europe. It's very safe. Um, the gender equality is like pretty equal here in Norway. So working like possibility are like, for both female and male, it's very equal and it's easy to find a job. Uh, high employment rate, and it's also one of the happiest countries to live in. Then one BI. So BI is uh, triple accreditation institutions. So I think around 1% of the business school in the world has triple accreditation. So it could be an index for students who are considering stud uh, studying abroad. Um, so besides looking at other things, then the, you could also consider that. Uh, there are guaranteed housing for all international students, where, which we are going to men mention later. It's also a very international school, um, at least for the bachelor programs. We have the BBA and business analytics program. We have around 60% of international students and 40% of um, Norwegians. But that changes like from year to year, but it's quite high. Um, then... Uh, BI is also a very research-based uh, school, so especially for the finance department, like BI is pretty fam famous for the finance uh, programs. You can also customize your own degree, which we will talk a little bit more about it later. And BI has a very good relationship with the company, so each semester, like each year, there is a career fair uh, on campus, which around 100-something companies will come to BI and recruit. The employability is uh, easy for later on. So if you wanted to uh, work later on in Norway or go back home, it will be a degree for you. And you also get like very good student life. So I'll share my experience later. Um, today we are going to talk about two bachelor's program, uh, bachelor in business administration and bachelor in business analytics. These are the two programs that is taught in English, completely in English. Uh, I will also mention a little bit about the pathway program with Jönköping University in Sweden. There are two track, English track and general track. So that program is made for students who just graduated from high school. And if you need a plus one year of higher education before attending uh, BI's program, then you can consider pathway program as well. For the Bachelor of Business Administration program, it's 100% taught in English. The composition of the students are around 60% international, 40% Norwegian, and it differs from each year. So we have around 140 students to 160 students um, each year. It changes, so I can't really give you a specific number, but around 60% is international. So there are normally 50 or 60 plus of nationalities in your class, like if you decided to do Bachelor of Business Administration, there are normally like maybe one or two countries that has a slightly higher uh, representatives. For example, like the US, uh, Germany, um, might be Sweden as well. 
but normally you will only get like one or two students who are the same uh, the same country as you which is very very diverse and you can make friends from all over the world in the bachelor of business Migration program uh, the first two years you study together with everyone and in the third year you can customize your pro uh, your degree so you have to choose between three different specializations the first one is finance uh, there's finance international business and shipping management for these specializations so classes will split into three parts it depends on how many students choose each program um, normally it will be around 40 to 50 students per specialization but it depends on your year if that year people are more interested in finance you might get more students in that class uh, for example in my year we are around 50 percent of students who chose uh, international business and then the other 50 chose either finance or shipping management for the uh, for all three specializations you are able to enter a master program if you have the required uh, average but it will not um, prevent you from for example if you chose finance and you decided to do something else for your master it will not be a problem at all so even if you wanted to do international business uh, you can still do master in finance later on so it's very flexible it doesn't prevent you from entering a master later on so you should make that decision based on your own preference and your own interest then we have the bachelor in business analytics program it is a newer program uh, which started last year so right now we'll have the first year of a uh, bachelor in business analytics program compared to the business administration one it is slightly smaller um, for this year we have around 40 something students so compared to a it's like one third of the size of um, uh, business administration it's also 100% taught in English. That, uh, this program has a stronger focus on data and quantitative subjects. So for example, you get courses like programming, uh, data extraction, visualization, database, data analysis, machine learning, um, quantitative economics. So these are the courses that is different from the business administration program. But you also have classes that are similar to them so for example the basic business courses that is important like accounting uh, statistics math these are the courses that is that are the same as the administration program so if you are interested in data and wanted to have a slightly more quantitative subjects this will be the right program for you it is also very new and we still see a lot of demands in the industry in the companies who want students with these um, abilities especially the programming and analysis um, skills um, at bi we have a master program in business analytics pro uh, in business analytics so if you are already sure that you really want to do master in business analytics then uh, Bachelor in Business Analytics will give you a very good foundation. Of course, if you did not have, uh, if you didn't want to choose Business Analytics, BBA program will also allow you to do uh, Master in Business Analytics later. So for example, I did BBA program, uh, but I end up studying Master in Business Analytics. For me, I think that it gives you a very good, BBA gives you a very good foundation of understanding business as a whole you will have the theoretical part that you need and the programming part that um, it's possible to learn when you are in the master. So it's not a problem at all. Um, so the opportunities for both program, you will be able to choose um, besides, besides your mandatory courses, you will be able to choose elective courses. I think for the BBA, you have slightly more electives than the business analytics program because they have a they have more mandatory courses on um, for example the programming part uh, but it's not a problem at all you can still freely choose like what you wanted to study uh, for both program you will be able to do exchange bi has around 200 plus partner schools so you are free to go on exchange uh, and there are also bi internship possibilities in your third year uh, just so you know that if you want to do exchange for BBA, you will need to study international business. That is a set thing. So you have to choose 
your specialization in international business, but for business analytics, there's only one. So you can go on a chain, you can do BI internship, uh, it's up to you. In order to enter master at BI, you need to have at least an average B. So that is a minimum requirement. So if you are sure that you wanted to do a master degree, it's better to keep up with your study. Um, so admission requirement. Mm, for the for students who did IB diploma, uh, the admission depends on countries because Norwegian government have this requirement of for some countries you will need a plus one year of higher education. For some countries you only need a high school diploma. Uh, that is because of the education system difference. So for example in Norway that they have 13 years of uh, education up to high school, but for some countries it's only 12 years. And in Norway, the bachelor is three years instead of four years. That makes up the difference. That's why for some countries, you will need to have this plus one year of uh, education in order to study bachelor in Norway. Um, English test is a minimum requirement. So for sure, everyone will have to take an English test unless you are, uh, unless you did IB for your high school or you are a native speaker. For example, in the US, if you're from the UK, Australia, New Zealand, um, yeah. So these are listed on BI's website. If you are from these countries that you don't need to take English test, just check online before you actually apply. Uh, one year pathway with Yun Shipping University. So this program is made for the students who need the plus one year of higher education or need higher English scores in order to enter BI's bachelor program. Um, right now there is there are two tracks the English track and general track so if your English meet a certain level but didn't meet BI's requirement then you can take the general track so they will focus a bit more on the culture side um, for those who I, as far as I remember I think it's 5.5 in yields that you will take the general track and then if you have only five then you have to take the English track to improve the English uh, skills if you did uh, Yun Shipping University's pathway program, then you basically get a conditional admission to BI as long as you pass this, all of your um, classes there. So you will be one year studying in Sweden, then you will be able to come to Norway to finish your bachelor degree for three more years. And you are free to choose either business information or business analytics. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to share a bit of my experience. So studying at BI as a bachelor student, you get quite a lot of support. For BBA students, when you started, um, for almost every classes, you'll have TA sessions uh, either arranged by school or arranged by your professor. And the, these sessions happen uh, once a week. Not for every course, sometimes it takes turns. So for this week, you might have math. For next week, you might have statistics. But basically, there are master students who exceeded, uh, who, who did very well in these courses will be your uh, teaching assistants and then giving extra help for students who need. Um, it is not mandatory to attend those TA sessions, but it's up to you. If you want some extra help, then you are free to go. Uh, you also get drop-in session in library, so you can drop in anytime to ask questions that you have, or you can also book one-on-one -on -one learning assistant. Uh, so in the picture that there are like all the learning assistants BI has, and they are mostly bachelor, uh, mostly master students who did very well in their bachelor or did very well uh, in their master, and then they are there to help students who need some extra uh, guidance. For the societies, BI has a lot of societies. Um, you have more academic oriented ones, for example, like the case club, uh, investment, finance, but you also have societies which is more athletic based. So for example, basketball, uh, baseball, these kind of things. So every year in the beginning of the semester, there is a recruitment date. So all the societies will come out and recruit uh, students who are interested in joining the societies. You will have a short interview, like five, 10 minutes, and then they will basically just ask, what is your motivation? Uh, why do you want to join? How much time you can dedicate to the society? But it is a very good way to get to know students from different programs, uh, different year, and kind of get away from study a little bit. 
um, each year there is a body week in the beginning of semester. So the second week of August before the classes actually start, there's a very big event like lasts for the whole week. You'll get to know the city, you'll get to know students from your class. Um, it's the, the one BI has is called Father Vilond. So it's one of the biggest and then it's also cooperated together with University of Oslo and uh, Oslo Med. So basically other university students will also join this event. So it's kind of like a whole week of partying and socially getting to know people, which is very important because um, if you didn't join that week, you'll probably realize when you started classes, then everyone already know each other and you might have a bit of problem to find a group. But it's also very beneficial to join that week. For associations, for example, the BBA program has a BBA associations. They arrange different types of events like um, sometimes there are guest lectures from companies. Uh, there are also field trips traveling to Prague, Budapest. Um, I think that happens once per semester. Um, you get to know students from different years. There's also Halloween party, Christmas party. They arrange that every, basically every semester. So there are events for only for BBA students. And, but the BBA program is a very big program. So you always get to know a lot of people. Uh, for the business analytics program, right now there is a business analytics association in the master level. As far as I know, that they also try to involve um, students from the bachelor level. So there are, um, right now, I think the business analytics association is more academic based. There's not that much of um, fun activities like socialing, but it's very good for uh, people who want to actually get into the industry, get to know the industry better. As an international student, you are allowed to work up to 20 hours per week. And during the holidays, you can work as much as you want, which normally, if you work, uh, the pay in Norway is pretty good. You should be able to cover most of your living expense, um, like rent and food if you don't spend like too much on eating out and drinking and partying. But uh, in general, like if you work like around 15 hours per week, um, which is very possible for the bachelor level, um, you will be able to cover a lot of costs and Norway will be less expensive uh, than you think once you start working. For traveling, like uh, you have classes around for the bachelor level, you have around five to five, uh, four to five classes per semester. Um, you, uh, each class is around three hours. So you do have a lot of extra time to work and outside of work and studying, you are free to travel. Within Europe, you can pay like 300 kroners to Berlin. Um, you can, sometimes there are also free crews going to Copenhagen, it depends, uh, but traveling, within Europe it's pretty cheap and it's very convenient. So I would definitely recommend students who are from like far away to do some traveling to get to see different cities while you are in Norway and in Europe. Okay so here comes the practical information. For international students you are guaranteed housing as long as you apply before May 1st. So that is the deadline for housing. Um, you can work up to 20 hours as mentioned earlier and the health insurance is covered by Norwegian health system. So you don't need to pay extra to get covered. International students, basically you just need to have a small insurance before you come here and cover the first few weeks before you actually get your ID number in Norway. But once you have get your residence card, get your ID number, then uh, in, uh, the health system is covered. So if you're sick, then you're basically treated the same way as Norwegians. Um, for the budget part, there is no application fee for BI, so I would really would recommend everyone who are interested in joining BI to apply as early as possible. Um, our priority deadline is March 1st, but uh, for international students, you can apply all the way until July. Uh, just at the first round, like we will give out uh, positions, we will we'll give out admissions to um, students who apply before March 1st 
Then after that, it will be on a rolling basis. So it will be first come, first served, and until all the spots are filled up. The tuition fee in the bachelor level are 85,000 kroners. Um, you might have to do some converting into your own currency, but that's the per year. If you study at BI for your bachelor, then you get a small discount in tuition fee if you decided to do a master. The living expense is around 7,000 to 10,000 kroners, depends on how much you spend, uh, what type of housing you have, but, uh, and if you cook uh, by yourself, not eating out too much, but I would say 7,000, it's very, very possible to live pretty good in Norway. BI also have canteens that you can pay very good price for food, um, but of course the cheapest way is to cook at home by yourself. So uh, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the scholarship. Uh, for scholarship, there are two types. There's the IB scholarship and bachelor scholarship. The IB scholarship covered 100% of tuition fee and are for students who did IB program. And for bachelor scholarship, it covers 50% uh, of the tuition fee. There are normally around, I would say four or five spots for the scholarship and you have to apply before March 1st. So for this year, it's a little bit too late, but for students who are interested in entering if, uh, for 2021 intake, then just remember you have to apply before March 1st. Uh, feel free to contact us through info at bi.no. We also have a blog, which is called Life at BI and Instagram uh, Life at BI. So you can follow, there are stories shared by current students, international students, um, if you wanted to get to know more about how studying at BI is like. So thank you, and we're going to enter into the Q&A time. Thank you very much, Amanda. Um, you can grab a glass of water and breathe <laughs> a little bit. Uh, I think we should leave this last slide. What do you think? Let's just leave yeah, I can do that. The, the context for BI. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if they wanted to reach out to, to BI, they can send an email or check the blog or the Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. that's perfect. Let's begin with the questions. Um, we had uh, a question about an age limit. Is there an age limit to um, apply to the any of the bachelors? No, there is no age limit. So I have classmates ranging from high school graduates or 18 to even 30, 35 years old. So there's no age limit. Everyone is welcome. Perfect. I hope that is clear for our participants. Can we give them more information about the scholarships? What do they need to do? Do they need to write a letter? What do they need to submit? Mm -hmm. So for the scholarship, you will have to submit your application, the like scholarship application together your uh, BI application there will be a spot. You will need to write in kind of like a letter, uh, which called it like scholarship application, but it's kind of like a letter format stating your motivation, uh, why you think you are eligible to the scholarship. Um, so yeah, you just need to attach that and then upload it to the right place when you're applying. Okay, um, and does it go together with the application? Yeah. It goes together. So under your application, uh, you'll, you'll have a place to upload. Okay, and that's, all, that's it? That's the that's letter? That's it. Yeah, do just a letter. Have, do you do an interview or something? No interview. Yeah, so it will be based on your performance, um, academ academic performance, and then your scholarship uh, application. Perfect. Okay, that's yeah. perfect. What else did we have here? Oh, how much does the course cost? Course, the tuition fee? Yeah. Uh, 85,000 kroners per kroners. year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so we talked about scholarships. Okay, and how long does it take to receive an answer from about the scholarships, Amanda? Um, right now, for this year, we are, if you apply before March 1st, then um, the scholarship will come, the result will come out around end of April. Okay. Yeah, but sometimes uh, you will get 
um, contacted a bit earlier if you really perform well academic and then you'll have a general like in general your english score is very high your academic performance is good and your application is good then you might get contact earlier but in general um, it will be in april okay we you know we have people from all over the world and yeah. uh we have a very young group also, so maybe they are not really comfortable with the English. Mm -hmm. What can you recommend them? Is it an obstacle not to be really fluent in the language? Um, I don't think it will be a problem to not be fluent in English because everyone, you're gonna have students from basically all over the world. Not everyone is native English speaker. Um, it's not a problem at all. As long as you're willing to speak willing to interact with people then i don't think you need to worry at all yeah. okay um and you know uh the educational system is very diverse from country to country mm -hmm. especially in the south hemisphere yeah. the, the the deadlines are different maybe you graduate later and then for those who are about to finish high school can they still apply and then present the diploma yes uh so if you are interested in entering like the 2020 intake, you can still apply. Um, the only thing is that you won't be able to apply for scholarship because the deadline has passed already. Mm -hmm. um, so all you need to do is upload your latest transcript, the, the, the latest one, and okay. say, say that you are graduating. And uh, once you have your diploma, you just need to send that to BI. That will be all. So then, feel free to apply. Mm -hmm. Okay, and to apply um, besides the transcript or the diploma, what else do they need to send? Do they need to send a passport? Yeah, so you will need to send a scan of your passport. You will need to have the English test score, um, your application letter, okay. transcript, your diploma. I think that's probably it. Okay, that's perfect. And we will send uh, in the following days the link uh, mm -hmm. to BI's um, websites to check all the requirements and do you remember how your the application went amanda was it difficult it was quite fast um i will recommend if you have all your documents ready uh send in early because i send in i send in mine quite early so i got it like within a week mm -hmm. um a reply from bi but if you send in like march 1st which is the deadline we're gonna get I, at least bi is gonna get tons of application at a time so the process time will be way longer it might take yeah. like three weeks or even longer to process your application um for this year situation can differ a little bit um, um i'm not so sure how long or how many people are working at the moment it's bi is still working but it might take a bit longer than normal okay yeah. and mm -hmm. when should the, all things considered right um all over the world but when should the start the, the classes begin so the classes starts uh officially starts in third week of august mm -hmm. but the second week of august is the body week so it's, it's very important for students to join it's fun and you get to know people you get to know the city know the school know the system better um, it will definitely help once you have start classes yeah that's perfect um, um, so some people asked if the programs are full-time or part-time. It's full-time. Uh, the program I just mentioned are all full-time. We don't have a part-time program in English, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of our attendees uh, says that uh, he or she has a diploma, IB diploma, International Baccalaureate diploma, mm -hmm. um, studied English SL, a second, a second language. Does, does he or she have to take the TOEFL? No, for IB students it's different. So for IB students, you don't need to take the English test. Okay, that's perfect. Um, what else were they asking here when the classes begin? We talked about it, scholarships also. Please remember to send your questions in the Q&A section, okay? Um, yes, I will send the links, don't worry. You also have the contacts for BI. Um, what else? Okay, we talked about the English level. Um, what else do they want to know? Let me see. <laughs> Take your time. It's mostly about 
the scholarship. <laughs> yeah. But um, okay, are all the programs um, in person? Uh, you mean that they have to be on campus? Exactly. Yes, yes. For both of the BBA and business analytics, you have to be here in Norway. Okay. Um, they are also asking if you go if the um, c c this question is in Spanish, so I have to translate <laughs> live. Um, are the classes seminar like, or do you have group assignments? What is it like? Yeah. Um, it depends on the professors. So most of the time, but for the bachelor ones, I would say they are maybe 70% that you have to um, complete maybe midterm together with someone. So in small groups, but for the final, they are mostly individual, uh, but it depends. So for example, like math, uh, statistics, statistics, these kind of mm -hmm. courses, accounting, you'll have to do it by yourself. Uh, but for pro, uh, for subjects like strategy, uh, marketing, you might have group project that you have to work with someone. Like uh, BI center is maximum three people in a group. Okay. Um, sometimes four, but mostly three. Yeah. Okay. And um, what else? So the classes are in English. We talked about mm -hmm. that. Both programs are in English. Yes. We have a few people that are worried about their English level. So maybe we can reassure them, Amanda, that uh, it's actually this exposure to English that makes them learn and become mm -hmm. fluent, right? Yeah. So I would say in the beginning, like you will have to get used to uh, hearing different accents because all of your classmates are from different parts of the world. Um, it might take some time, like professors are not necessarily native speaker, so mm -hmm. they might have accent as well, but um, like at BI, you don't need to worry about if you don't understand, always raise your hand to ask the professor to repeat again. It's not a problem. Uh, it's also very understandable. Sometimes your classmates might have the same issue, but they just didn't say it. So I don't think you need to worry about the English level too much. As long as you are willing to participate, willing to talk to people, then you will learn very fast once you are in the environment because you have to use English daily. You have to study in English. You have to write in mm -hmm. English. Um, you will definitely improve very fast. The worst case is that you are not trying to communicate with people, then you might get is isolated. But um, for normal, like normal people who are fine with, like as long as you try, mm -hmm. then it shouldn't be a problem at all. But if you are really struggling, then we also have counseling sessions that you can ask someone for help um, see if they have some suggestion for you. So I would say if you are willing to reach out for help, not afraid of um, asking, then it should be fine. Okay. They are, um, there, there is a question about the hours that they can work. Was it 20 mm -hmm. hours? What type of job can they, I don't know if it's considered a job, yeah. an internship, what can the students uh, do? So for bachelor level, for people who doesn't speak Norwegian, it will be a little bit hard to find job that is 100% relevant to what you're studying. Mm -hmm. um, most common for international students, you can work in a cafe, you can work in the clothing store, you can work uh, at BI. BI also have some positions that is open for international students, for, for actually all the students. Um, so I would say most common positions that uh, bachelor students have will be like cafe, restaurants, okay. um, clothing store, retail stores. Um, some of the students have translation job if you speak a certain language that has very high demand. Uh, so translate your native language to English or to other language. But yeah, it shouldn't be a problem to find. Okay, good. Thank you very much, Amanda. Keep yep. sending your questions in the Q&A section. You know, we talked about maximum age before, and uh, I, think, I guess we have a few young people. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's see, what do you tell me, Amanda? Is there um, a minimum age uh, for the bachelor? Um, some people in Latin America finish when they are 17, mm -hmm. high school, so they can already go to university. What happens in Norway? Um. So first you need to check that whether you are able to 
directly attend the BBA program or business analytics program because of the education system difference. Mm -hmm. So some of you might need the plus one year, uh, like mentioned oh. before. Um, so I'm not so sure for those like really young ones that if you need a plus one year or not, depends okay. on what you have taken. You might have IB, then you can enter directly. But for those, um, normally age is not a problem. Mm -hmm. It's the education that you have. If you have the required years to enter a bachelor program here in Norway, okay. um, you might run into a certain problem because you're under 18 that you might not able to join some events because there's alcohol involved. Mm -hmm. Uh, you might need uh, parents' permission in yeah. some events. So, I mean, we have students who are 17 years old. It's a little bit more limited, but uh, yeah. it shouldn't affect, affect your daily life. And, and I guess for the scholarship also, you can apply. It yeah. depends on your studies, right? Yeah, it depends on your study. So it, it doesn't depend on age. I'm going to answer here. Mm -hmm. Um, there is another question. Uh, okay, um, you took business analytics, right, Amanda? So, uh, for my bachelor, I did BBA. Okay, but my master is in business analytics. Yeah, because I have a participant asking about the subject of the BBA. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. you can Feel describe free. the the study plan. Um. So first year, you will have more general subjects like math, statistics, accounting, marketing, um, these basic um, subjects that you will need in order to proceed to the next level. And so first year, it's more general. And then the second year, start getting to know a little bit more specific, like basic financial management. You get some finance subjects. Uh, in the second year, you have two electives. So it's up to you what to choose, uh, one or two. I think one, one elective. And then you have also microeconomics, macroeconomics. Um, so I would say more of like a general business subject. And then in the third year, when you choose your specialization, you go deeper into the specific area. For example, I did finance. So I have more finance-based um, subjects like risk management, investment and analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, for international business students who did uh, that specialization, they have more general ones. So it's kind of like an extension of BBA. And for shipping students, you get more specific like marine time law, you get uh, marine time finance or um, what else do you have? Yeah, something, something similar to shipping. But uh, so first year is more general, basic um, subjects that you need in order to succeed in the second and third year. Second year is more like a general business things like micro macro strategic um, accounting organizational behavior. Third year is like very specific depends on your specialization. I see yeah. and uh, the, the, um, our participants are asking if they have to if there is a mandatory internship or a mandatory thesis. Uh, no for BBA and I'm not so sure about business analytics, but for BBA, there is no bachelor thesis. Um, internship, it's uh, up, uh, like uh, not, not mandatory. So for the third year, you can decide to do your internship or do more electives. So for me, I did uh, my internship, which counts for two courses. So I didn't choose any electives in my last year. Okay. Yeah. So it's up to you whether you wanted to do an internship or you wanted to do electives, but you only need to find an internship by yourself. Perfect. I'll get, I'm gonna, uh, maybe this, this question, you <laughs> can give us a really good answer, Amanda, because you, you've been through that. What are the exams like? What are the exams like? Um, so there are many different types of exams. Uh, right now, I think BI is trying to shift away from 100% written exam, like only having one exam to determine your grade. There are a little bit more, uh, sometimes it's 50-50, sometimes mm -hmm. it's 30-70, but normally you'll have something uh, like a midterm, which yeah. you might need to submit an essay, uh, a project, um, like finish some sort of a home assignment in order to take the final exam. And for the final exams, it really depends on the subject. Um, for more like calculation type of subjects that you have, you might have to take a written exam, which might last like three to five hours, depends on the classes. Mm -hmm. um, 
first year, like they are pretty generous, like they give like five hours for a lot of exams. But then when you get to the higher level, like you will realize everything is getting harder and you have shorter time. Um, so at least in my third year that a lot of subjects are written exam within three hours and the level of difficulty is definitely harder than the first year. Okay. Yeah, I hope that answers the question, but there's so many different types of exams. Hope it doesn't scare them. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> but you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think this is a very interesting question, Amanda. You know, a lot of these students are just beginning their, their studies, um, choosing a, a bachelor degree, choosing a university. And uh, I have one that's asking, what is the difference between an university and a business school? What do you think is different in the environment? Mm. Um, so for me, like BI is like a business school. So we only have subjects that is business related. Um, in my opinion, like university might be more general. So you might have different departments. You might have different, you might have engineer, you might have medical school. Uh, human what's that called like uh like sciences some sort of things uh which is not business related so you will have more like an open space campus but bi is yeah. uh, if, if you compare in this way it's like very specific all of your classmates all of the students on campus will be studying business uh okay. related subjects yeah okay because I, I have a few comments here um about the, the, the degrees, but they, they last four years, right? So it's not that you study faster because you're in a business school. No, no. Um, it's the same. So if you decided to study in a university in Norway, your bachelor will still be three years. And then studying at BI, it's still going to be three years. So okay. it will be exactly the same, just that um, the subject is different. Okay. And you're more prepared for to get a job, to start your career possibly in Norway? Um, I mean, business in general are easier to get a job. Mm -hmm. I guess compare, it depends on what you're comparing to, right? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Um, uh, I think that's it. We have answered um, all of the questions. I will send all the links. Don't worry, you can check out uh, BI's website. Also take a look at the Instagram account. Mm -hmm. Amanda, I want to thank you and also ask if you have anything to add. Of course, we're waiting for the applications to start coming in. Um, do you have any final advice, tips? Um, for application, I would say like right now it's still not too late, so feel free to send in. And if you are planning on applying for uh, 2021, then now you have all the information that you have. Um, I will recommend sending in earlier so you get an answer earlier. So you don't have to wait too long. Um, there are things that you can prepare yourself before entering like English level. Um, no need to worry, just be open-minded, be friendly and be willing to ask for help. Okay, that's yeah. good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, this is it. Remember that you will receive an email in the following days. Um, you have BI Norwegian's contact uh, here, the email, the blog, and the Instagram. It was my pleasure to have you all here. Thank you again, Amanda. This Thank was you. a webinar in partnership uh, of BI and the Doxity. I hope you have enjoyed it. Let us know what you thought. Um, thanks again, and see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.